the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Maintain these relationships even when they don't make sense. The man will be a troublemaker for 11 years. And yet you will see the people carrying them like extra luggages. And sometimes you are tempted to say, can't you drive this driver? Send this man out of your house. Except that they understand that in the midst of all of this, there is destiny. Can I tell you, there are people who there is no reason why they should be in your life now. And God will still say, keep them. Because their relevance is not yet now. If you have the discernment to be patient, the next 20 years of your life can be secured. Yes, sir. Ah, I wish I were lying to you. I would have just said sorry. But what I'm saying is so true. If you ignore what I'm saying, you may spend the rest of your life paying the price. Have you seen people that you once knew and at the time you knew them, there was an opportunity and you knew there was something in your spirit. There was a call for genuine connection. You ignored them either because they had appearances that were not appealing. Welcome to 10 years later of your life. And you find them at the cutting edge of influence and now you're biting your fingers and wondering why didn't i say good morning that day good morning that day would have equaled an estate today are we together yeah. in my life let me tell you sincerely there are people who have been very nice and kind to me in times past and sometimes i sit down and i'm meditating and the Lord just brings in their images and brings in things. And I sit down and say, ah, it's been such a long time. Try to, I could call, make calls and say, find out for me about this person. How is he or how is she? How are they doing? And in all honesty, sometimes God just put things in my heart. And I just say, let me surprise this family and do something for them. And they are amazed. Sometimes they call and they are crying and they are saying, apostle, you mean you could remember us? Your God bless you. Of yesterday you're helping someone lift a bible yesterday can be equivalent to the job of your five children you may not know there are people today the only bad thing that will happen to them in their life is hellfire but as far as this earth is concerned they will never suffer on earth again because they have stretched like an octopus they have mastered relationships and put together systems and structures that immune them from failure perhaps the only way they may the only place they may have missed it is not acknowledging the lordship of jesus but as far as the earth is concerned they have sorted their destinies Every time they make calls, there are memories of their investments in the lives of too many people for them to be ignored. Like Gideon, they will make one call and 32,000 people will come and say, we remember in 1971, you treated us well. What do you want? My son is not able to get to the university. My son is not getting a visa. When I'm the ambassador, bring the passport. They said that there's something, he didn't spell his name well. I will correct it myself. Let me tell you, suffering is relative. Don't generalize it. There are people who were wise enough to say, I can't suffer now and suffer later. So while they were going through the constraints of today, they said, I may not have had the privilege to be educated. I may not have had the privilege to come from a family whose status is noteworthy. But now I will use this opportunity. Can I tell you, there are cleaners today who have become billionaires because they honored their way through cleaning into wisdom that blessed them and those who were raised in the same house who trivialized the opportunities did not learn anything there are men of god today who when they started ministry they didn't even know they would be men of god they started maybe as secretaries they started maybe as cleaners 
and every time they would go and watch the man of god pray three hours because you are the one who cleans his room you have that access to see his personal life wow so this is how this man prays you now go and start doing your own small prayer too and one day fire falls on your head from a cleaner he brings you as an apostle are you learning something tonight yes sir most of you the reason and I'm, I'm saying this sincerely from my heart many of us today god gave us a chance for a beautiful and a great destiny we lost it out of lack of discernment but thank god you are in church hmm. there are many angry people today who keep looking at great people caught across different um areas i used to know this man today he is the chairman board of so 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 and so and he can't even remember me question what investment did you make you can't just show up in people's destinies and say remember me no honestly if you learn what i'm sharing with you tonight you will come and say thank you tomorrow because it will grant you the wisdom that will cause you to excel are we blessed yes there are people today in their old age they may not even have any respectfully speaking they may not have any responsible children but they will never beg for bread because in their days of youth they were mothers to too many people for them to beg for bread the ones taking care of them today are not even their biological children because of someone who stayed maybe when he was on it as a student he stayed in their house and mama treated that person as though it was their own child and you see the boy with his 200 naira cloth and his his his, his torn shirt he vowed that one day you will laugh because of me 10 years later he comes with a car he comes with a house he comes with a trip a vacation trip and people say this is too much he said no if she could see that glory in me 10 years ago then i will invest in her life for the remaining part of my life make reference to my teachings the law of seasons please if you are yet to listen to it go ahead and listen to it the mystery of pharaoh's dream the law of seasons you can find it on our youtube page koinonia global please listen to it again and again what to do with your seven years of plenty that will help you stand tall even in your seven years of nothing relationships are powerful they are advantageous connections now let's run very quickly and see a few principles knowing then that associations and relationships are all important as far as our growth and excelling is concerned let's learn a few kingdom principles that can help us have and maintain quality destiny relationships are you ready please pray in the spirit in one minute while while you're seated open my eyes oh god grant me the grace blessed by association someone here is rising a man of god here is rising a businessman is rising someone is shaking off the limitations of today to say i may not have been able to do anything about yesterday but i can hear this today and it sets me on a course for a great life hallelujah please write number one the first principle when it has to do with maintaining relationships are you ready now avoid proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30 avoid competitive jealousy it is a weakness in all men competitive jealousy has nothing to do with being good or bad it's a limitation in men the moment we feel incapacitated based on an obvious reference the temptation is there it is something you must be intentional about you think because you have the holy ghost because you have the word automatically everyone will at one point or the other be tempted on this wise it takes knowledge to immune you are we together the bible says a sound heart is the tree of is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones avoid competitive jealousy next scripture very quickly 
Proverbs 27 and verse 4. Proverbs 27 and verse 4. The Bible says, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? That means these things are bad. Though. Anger is not good, but relative to, to envy, anger is like a saint. Competitive jealousy. Can I tell you this? Except you've not been alive for a while, you must have come across this as a temptation. And the Lord is granting you the grace now to build through the immunity of the word. You must enter into a covenant that when God brings you to people and associations that are for your destiny, you must make up your mind that you will fight with the determination of a warrior to make sure that you run away from competitive jealousy. We live in a world of social media. We live in a world of statistics where it is easy for people to compare and contrast whether as a man of god whether as a businessman we live in a celebrity world where there is an obsession to show that you are the one doing this or that you have to be very careful thank god for westernization but we must be very careful because it's turning human beings to become something else are we together now there is dignity in your uniqueness you must appreciate who and what God has made out of you. You know, many times when I speak, especially to preachers, when they come to meet me, you can see this air of sincere intimidation as though, Apostle, you are the ones who are doing this and that. And very quickly and lovingly, I hush them and I say, no, do not think so. The basis of our judgment is already flawed based on our mindset. You will have to be God to judge correctly. You would have called Anna the prophet as a failure because all she did was to stay in the temple for more than 60 years. Who would give her honorarium? Who would put posters with her face there? Yet that was the first person that Jesus was brought to before he met other people. What of Simeon the prophet? Our parameters for measuring success especially in our world today has to be re-edited from the lens of God's word so that we do not put the pressure that begins to fabricate competitive jealousy chances are excellent that when you see a man of God who seems to be charismatic worded as we call seems to have the anointing a crowd some level of influence chances are that based on our human parameter we place those people high we give them we accord them respect and don't get me wrong priesthood has a demand for honor and within the boundary of priesthood the honor that is demanded should be accorded but not to the detriment of those who may seem to be the nobodies because you see i have learned something by scripture and experience when god hides you is proof that you are extremely special to him one of the ways that god shows how special a person or a thing is is that he hides it look at the formation of the human body the parts that are more precious that are really responsible for your being alive and healthy are hidden something can bruise your hand right now and within a few days it can heal back but let that happen to your heart let that happen to your liver let that happen to your lungs avoid competitive jealousy is is god speaking to us yes envy and jealousy is something that is in us humans generally there is a psychology to it that you see everyone sincerely no matter how right or wrong generally speaking everyone sincerely is attempting to make efforts to make meaning out of their lives whether or not they end up getting it is a different thing but intrinsically i've had the honor and privilege of talking with all kinds of people you can talk with someone who is a drug addict and you look at him and say my, my friend now that you are in this do you love this kind of life you're living he will tell you no he will say what did you aspire to be they will tell you i wanted to be a pilot i wanted to be a this and that so nobody generally would want to just get up and destroy themselves except that you see i teach the school of ministry students that success has an implication on those who are the onlookers 
because the moment you are commanding results of any sort generally your result kills the excuses of people who have used excuses to justify mediocrity so if they say i was not able to do well they say no that's not true what of so 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 and so under the same condition and that becomes the root of jealousy avoid competitive jealousy what makes you avoid competitive jealousy the knowledge that you are a unique expression of god's glory unique expression of god's glory hmm. are we blessed number two how do you maintain relationships avoid ill or evil speaking avoid ill or evil speaking and that extends to things like backbiting gossip and so on and so forth avoid ill or evil speaking three scriptures very quickly titus chapter 3 and verse 2 let's hurry up titus chapter 3 and verse 2 second principle avoid evil or ill speaking that extends to gossips backbiting titus 3 and verse 2 the bible says to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men did you know there are people who literally do not have a conversation if it's not gossip i hope you are not the one as you are talking back at me now i hope you are not just talking about someone else i'm not being sarcastic no discussion if it's not a discussion about this one and that one have you seen what is happening in the presidency have you seen what is happening with men of god in our world and we sit down and analyze for the purpose of demeaning and destruction not building avoid evil speaking god gave you the gift of words and a mind for edification and lifting not for tearing down others are we learning yeah proverbs chapter 6 let's look at 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 god is delivering someone right now tonight the bible says these six things that the lord hate now pay attention when the lord tells you he hates something you want to know what it is yea seven are an abomination unto him uh-huh number one a proud look two a lying tongue three hands that shed innocent blood four a heart that devised wicked imaginations five feet that be swift in running to mischief seven what number now six a false witness that speaketh lies and then the bible says he that soweth discord among brethren may god forbid it but the responsibility of leadership and ministry mandates that i teach it that you do not become the person who goes from house to house place to place job to job joining the heads of innocent people together did you hear what this pastor said about you did you hear what this one said about you and the other person says really i've been waiting for this moment no one of the ways we make decisions is to understand the consequences that are at the other side of the decisions before we make them is god helping us now I, I don't i don't mean listen we are people of love when i teach like this you know that i teach from a standpoint of love but there are times that we need to bring out he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me are we together maybe some of us came from backgrounds where sincerely that was all you saw and that was all you knew every time people sat together all that they did was to analyze this analyze that now the difference between a meaningful discussion and backbiting or evil speaking is motif you will eventually have to talk about people and talk about things are we together but the difference is motif as leaders you will have to talk about people as family people parents children you will have to discuss people but the difference is motive when your discussion is to create an occasion to tear people down it is called evil speaking 
we must obtain grace tonight in the name of jesus christ to be mature to rise beyond the grip of these kinds of things and many of us this is how we derive our relevance among our associations we are usually the ones who bring in news have you heard we say what again ah you didn't hear that the other director did this one and that i saw it all One of the blessings of being purposeful is focus that when you are purposeful your purpose occupies you so much you hardly have extra time for frivolities and the things that make for base living are we together now avoid evil speaking you want to maintain relationships that bless you please pay attention to the end of it because there are a few things about men that i have to tell you number three for sake of time are you ready and are you learning koinonia is quiet thank you holy spirit god is walking are you ready the third key to maintaining quality destiny relationships is avoid offense write it down avoid offense what is offense offense is the ease with which you get irritated agitated angry resentful the ease there are some of us who are as volatile as kerosene or petrol anything at all even if jesus is said loud loud is enough to annoy you no you must avoid offense this was what i believe that this was one of the things that brought john the baptist down because john spent his time and had a wonderful track record but when he was now done he himself said i must decrease that jesus would increase excellent john would have finished strong and well except that when he went he was idle and he was no longer shining an offense came in are we together now yeah and he now went to go and discuss another man's business and they jailed him about to kill him and now he sent the man who ordained jesus he said go and tell him are you the messiah or should we expect another that kind of statement when someone looks at you haven't blessed him for years or haven't blessed her for years and say are you really my father or my mother that is not a statement deserving an answer it is proof that offense has come in the way you are behaving are, are you really my father And what do you think your father would do when you ask him that kind of question because <laughs> everybody that asks it receive it <laughs> are you learning can i tell you this by the pre you will betray you and let people see that there is a loophole you are not really there principles of relationships are you ready practice forgiveness write it down practice forgive 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 your wife forgive your husband and you are so uncomfortable coming to church please sit quietly this is why god brought you so that you will be blessed so that you will be lifted the bible says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake had forgiven you can i tell you this anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy is lying anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy has not been offended in this life there are people who are too innocent to for, to, to understand this teaching this night <laughs> nothing has happened in their life they've been shielded by so many people forgiveness is a kind of giving and you see the thing about forgiveness is when you forgive you don't help the one you are forgiving you help yourself it is true bitterness and offense is like piercing yourself with a knife and holding it there bitterness and offense is like drinking poison and expecting another person to die you keep gulping poison and watch you are not dead let me drink another one you are not dead let me drink another one are you learning practice forgiveness luke chapter 6 and verse 37 let's hurry up luke 6 37 
principles of relationships it says judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven did you know that the people who have it hardest to forgive are the ones who are even in greater need of forgiveness is that true you will never be able to excel having profitable relationships and profitable associations you will never be able to live with anybody any organization any friends at all if you do not practice forgiveness there are families that have siblings that are like tom and jerry cats and dogs it is possible that there are couples here listening and here in koinonia they don't talk to one another when it's time to sleep everybody just goes to their side of the bed just jumps there and everybody is talking to god two of them this one is saying lord i thank you you are my god and he's saying it in a way that pains the other person lord if i depend on men will, will i ever rise thank you for your man. come on listen this is a night when you go back home and swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything in obedience listen can i tell you this if you don't practice saying i am sorry you will never be able to excel in this life nations have gone to war today simply because someone was too proud to say i'm sorry i'm sorry does not kill i'm sorry simply means i am better today than i was yesterday are we together there are people who have lost jobs today simply because they could not say i am sorry there are people who have lost profitable relationships business relationships they have been driven from companies today because they could not say i am sorry let me teach you something do not allow your spiritual growth to make for an occasion where you cannot say i'm sorry there are parents that need to say i'm sorry to their children don't be ashamed it does not stop you from being a father or mother there are children who need to say i'm sorry if a man pays your school fees and you come back with a result that is an evil report why should he not quarrel you <laughs> now you get angry and you are not contributing anything i'm sorry has sent nations to go for war there are people today politicians including men of god there are people today who cannot see eyeball to eyeball i am sorry the pride of man is beyond comprehension is someone learning yeah you must as a principle practice forgiveness remember that forgiveness is a kind of giving Apostle, you don't know me, oh. I'm cool. But if anybody annoys me, it's an attack. We've been holding miracle services here. We've asked that people write their prayer request. Why do you think we kneel down and pray on these things? See, I'm saying this to you so that I, I trust God that God will help us to live such an excelling life. In truth, I will tell you, it's easier said than done. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Are we together? maybe there is a couple that need to go back home tonight and say look let's stop this thing this is one year of this childishness let's sit down the man is waiting for the woman to take the step i paid your bride price the woman is waiting for the man to take the step you are the one who came to ask me you see provided this kind of self keeps happening god in heaven who created us is not ashamed to come and say i have loved you with an everlasting love I have drawn you with my loving kindness self is a terrible thing it can recycle seasons of pain again and again and again there are people who stole from factories and were sent away 
and just the unashamedness to go back and say look i really am sorry this is it i i take responsibility there are politicians respectfully speaking who have maybe in time past i hope not presently so have stolen money from the and i'm sorry and a sense of responsibility no sir dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline